Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Colorado Rockies Rebuild Franchise here on MLB The Show 24. Today, we're taking on the 2025 MLB Draft, so we'll just go ahead and preview that a little bit. We're going to finish the scouting here on Billy McKenna, a third baseman who we're targeting at pick 44, currently 55th on our draft rank, but 60% scouted. We're going to uncover the rest of his development here a decent fielder with a strong arm there at the hot corner but more so we like him for his contact especially against lefties and the vision and discipline looks to be very good as well we're going to also finish up peter harper probably a better option there at pick 44 uh two players there we're considering with our second round pick and harper just looks to be an elite hitter contact wise with uh tremendous vision and discipline although the power leaves a little to be desired but you know he's going to get on base he has good uh above average speed at least future potential at 86 and a good fielder so peter harper we really like him with our second round pick and we also are going to just finish up uh, scouting shortstops in the international but we'll get a bigger look at the board so we have pick number seven and we really don't have many options here we forewent uh scouting any pitching in this draft we had a few options here william mccauley and fletcher kingman who pro who uh you know, those would be the guy that we would target at seven. But instead, we need to get some field in, some fielders, some position players into the organization. So coming in at number one on our board is Marcos Casto, 11th on the MLB board. And we still need to finish 10% of his scouting, which we are doing. We are going to finish off shortstops international. But you go over to fielding, looks to be a potential gold glove with elite speed and just all around very good in the speed and defense. But then you go over to hitting and I mean, not a bad hitter, but just really no strengths. So at number seven in the draft, I would really prefer to get someone with more hitting prowess, but we really don't have any options. And we're going to review them shortly, but Casto a shortstop with 85 to 96 potential, 21 years old. So I don't think he would be far from the big leagues, but his bat would just take a long time to come around, I think. And then there's Alex Para, number two on the actual board. And we scouted him number two on our board, but he would be the preferred option as a, an elite hitter, especially against lefties. Uh, very good against righties as well. A very strong arm there at third base, but not the best fielder. But just on hitting alone, I think we prefer Para uh, much more than uh, Casto. But I think if Casto's there and Para's not, he's going to have to be the guy. Steve Dell, the number one pick, we didn't even bother, uh, number one prospect, we didn't even bother scouting him. So hopefully he's uh, off the board before we select, otherwise I'll feel bad about that. Then we have Tom Park here, projected at 174. Our scouts are saying he's the fourth best player in the class. Again, like Casto, not a good hitter, although a pretty good contact against righties, but uh, an elite you know, glo uh, glove there at second base, 6'4", 215, and uh, good speed as well. So another defense speed type guy in the middle infield with his potential though, 84 to 99. So we can maybe get him with our last pick, which is at 171, but we'll try and, uh, we're not going to reach too far for him. We'll maybe go at 81 or 111 there, depending on who's available. So another second baseman now, 68th in the draft, according to MLB, fifth, according to our scouts. Very good contact, especially against lefties with very good vision and discipline, but then you kind of trade off a glove. Not the best fielder there at second base, but uh, good speed, good stealing and a super high ceiling with the potential 89 to 99 and already a high floor there at 58 to 68 overall. So Castilla, a very good option. I would love to get him in round two at 44, but I don't know if he'll be there. Even though he's 68th on the MLB board, you know, teams do scout as well. And we saw last year that they'll reach for players that, the, you know, it doesn't really matter where they're ranked on the MLB board. So Castilla may be an option at pick seven. If Alex Parr is not there, I don't know if I prefer Castilla to Casto. Our scouts are just a lot higher on Casto. And we have a potential of getting Castilla in the second round. But I really like him as a player. And I think he might be better than Casto. At least he brings some hitting. Moving down the line now. We didn't really scout many players in the first round. Uh, most of them that we did ended up falling. So that really you know, supplanted some options we would have. That's why it's so scarce here at the top. Here's Jesus Hernandez, another middle infielder, although he adds the third baseman as a secondary position. He goes up to 14 
from 112, another international shortstop, a switch hitter with very good contact, especially against lefties, tremendous vision, disciplines up there, another guy though with not much power, a decent fielder with good speed. So Hernandez, maybe someone we we uh, target at 44, depending on our options, more ideal though at 72 or 81. It says he is injured though, so his durability probably very low, but a very good ceiling there and a pretty high floor for the most part. And we didn't scout any pitching. Like I said, we took six starting pitchers last year, so we really didn't bother. Set, uh, shortstop here, Luis Zarate. So like I said, we are scouting international shortstops. He's only going to get 10% more, so we really won't see much more on him. But looks like he has a very strong arm, very fast with good contact. And a lefty as well. Rafael Benitez was really hoping he was going to be better. I mean, the traits don't look bad, but the potential... Not that high at just 78 to 83 with the overall there. Not much. Uh, so, I mean, he's not going to really grow as a player. The potential and overall pretty much the same. But he looks to be a very good player, but not at number seven. We were hoping for a catcher in this class, but not many options. As we see here, Joaquin Castilla, he was the 18th catcher and then f fell to 46 for us after scouting. So, we were kind of out on him. We're not going to reach for him. And the number seven player drops down to 53, Leonardo Pinero, but really just like fast, good glove there in center. Not even really a good glove and not really a good hitter either. Really just a fast player. And Mario Polanco, number three on the MLB board drops down to 57. So that's like what, two or three players already we've seen in the top 10 that could have been options for us that just totally fell down the board after we scouted them. 90% here. Short, another shortstop, Keith Benitez, not even ranked ranked uh, in the, on the MLB board, but 65 for us, better against lefties. Decent all-around bat, good speed, and a viable glove, not the best fielder. Maybe a late-round option if he's on the board. Another catcher here that fell after scouting, John Leal. So not a good catching class. Pedro Rosado, number six on the MLB board. We were hoping he would be a target for us dropped down to 71 after scouting. Not a bad player, but again, not worth the seventh pick. Now, Muhammad Huffman, he's our uh, top target at 72. A switch hitting corner infielder, which we really could use. Can play third base, first base with very strong arm and a very good fielder and decent power against righties. I think he was like a high floor type guy. Actually, I don't know. He might need. Some, he's only 18, so 6'5", 217, high potential, but it will probably take some time to develop him. Alexis Pedroza. Wish we could have finished scouting him. Looks to be a, a pretty good center fielder. You know, just a fielding speed type guy. But the potential there maxes out at 98, but only 35% scouted. So that would probably see a big decline. And I don't think we really had many options. Another catcher who fell down the board from 60 to 94. And this is our top catching prospect, really the only catcher we're targeting. We didn't get to finish his scouting, but a lefty with very good contact, especially against righties, good vision, discipline, and a strong arm there behind uh, behind home plate. Not the best fielder, but not bad. And we like his uh, potential and floor combo. So that's Ken Ramirez, 135th on the MLB board. Maybe going to target him at 111. Then we get to David Jackson, a shortstop out of the Netherlands. And very good contact, vision, discipline. Looks to be a tremendous fielder, but the potential and overall are very close there. So probably a player who wouldn't see any growth and might just end up regressing. Kind of like Cabrera. Had very good traits, but came in at a, as a deep potential. And we've seen him just fall. Um, we've seen him just decline. His traits all regressing. Luis Castro. Really not many. And here's a 12th overall on the board. Drops all the way down to 106, like I've been stressing. Our options at the top very scarce just because a lot of those guys didn't really pan out after scouting. So that's really the gist of it. I mean, we don't have a clear um, strategy. There's another late rounder I like, Robert Marmalejo, 70% scouted, but 157 on the MLB board. Maybe you can get him at 141 or 111 if there aren't better options. I don't think we really have many guys. Yeah, there's really no one else down here, so... Just to recap our top options here, Marcos Casto, a slick fielding shortstop with very good speed, going to be a, a very good base stealer, 
but the bat is going to leave a little on the table. Alex Parra, probably our ideal options at, at seven, but I don't think he's going to slip being the number two player on the board. So then that would leave Tom Park here fourth on our our scouts, but obviously we would probably wait on him, maybe 72 or 81. But David Castilla, I think I would really consider him at seven. Fifth on our board, 68 on the overall board. Jesus Hernandez, 112. We would wait on him, but looks to be a very good player, although he is hurt right now. I think there was one more guy, not Benitez. It was a left fielder, Harper. I know we're actually scouting him. That's why he's not showing up. So Peter Harper, I'm actually hoping that we can get him in round two. Tremendous contact, vision, discipline, and uh, above average in fielding and defense. So that's going to do it for scouting. Our last week is scouting. And now the MLB draft here in about a week. So we do have to sim ahead a little bit. And we will take a look at the lineup. Brendan Rodgers has uh, been slumping. If you watched last episode, you saw just a tough stretch there at the end. Six out of his last 61, batting sub 100 over his last 15 games. So we've moved, we've had him as the leadoff man primarily throughout the entire course of this series. We're going to move Joe Adele up there. I mean, only 52 contact, 38 vision, 43 discipline, but... We like the speed. He's been kind of hot since coming on with the Rockies. We want to leave McMahon, Jones, Alonzo, and 2-3-4. They've all been hitting very well there together. So we'll put uh, Rodgers there, sandwiched in between Alonzo and Santander, and hopefully he can get a little boost there. Chris Bryant, Tovar, and we'll put Danny Jansen back in the nine hole as that's kind of where he was hitting best previously. So now we try to avoid the sweep against the Reds. Uh, we, we fell last episode, dropped our last three, and add insult to injury, lost 14 to 2. So hopefully we can get off on the right note here. Max Freed pitching a shutout. Only one run of run support, though. Top of the ninth. Will Benson on, see if he could finish it out. And he does. Max Freed. And we do get a trade offer here. And we we're just talking about Brendan Rodgers. Now the Yankees are going to phone us. And they're offering us George Lombard Jr., a shortstop, only 19 years old. But that's funny. Like, right before I started recording this episode, I started thinking maybe we should trade or at least field offers for Brendan Rodgers in a contract year. No more uh, team control set to hit the open market. And I would like to sign him to a multi-year deal. But if he keeps declining like this, I mean, he is seeing progression along the board, although the power versus left, he's dropping. I really like what he did last year. Batted over 300, kind of contended for a batting title, but now just a very rough stretch. And, you know, we already have... Ezekiel Tovar as our shortstop, and then we have Adiel Amador, our top prospect, waiting in the wing. So I think Amador could slide over to second base, which would free up, you know, Brendan Rodgers. So maybe we get ahead of it. We could lose Rodgers to free agency. So maybe we just try to part ways and get some compensation. But I would definitely want more than what the Yankees are offering here. So we'll jump out of that. Just a little foresight on what might happen with Rodgers. I don't know if we're going to trade him or not, but. It certainly is a possibility. So Rosario actually batting leadoff in this one. Two for four. Rodgers. Rodgers had the day off. Nolan Jones two for two with two walks and a double. And only one run here. Max Freed eight and one third. Taj Bradley on for the save. He's now four out of five. And we're going to sit ahead a little bit. Now a series here against the Mets. Cal Quantrill pitching tremendous over his last five starts or so. Uh, one earned run. In his last like 33 innings. Let's see if he can keep it going here against Kodai Senga and Quantrill, another guy um, who we're going to field offers for at the trade deadline, likely two episodes from now. But Quantrill not helping his cause here, it, it appears. Four earned in five innings. Lucas Sims, a scoreless inning. Caleb Ferguson, two earned and just one out recorded. And his ERA now over 2.5 again. And I think we're going to just put him on waivers. It just didn't really work out with Caleb Ferguson and Ryan Yarbrough, one and two thirds of scoreless work. He's been phenomenal lately. I'll wait to handle that Caleb Ferguson situation. I don't know if it's realistic for him to get traded just with how bad he's been. I mean, he was good last season, but just not really adjusting well in Colorado. Now Kyle Freeland down against David Peterson. And the base is loaded here for Anthony Santander. He needs a triple for the cycle. Tovar also two home runs in this game. We're only up by two runs, but let's see if Santander can give us some insurance. 
We got one more run, but we do win eight to five. Tovar, three for five with a double and two home runs. Nolan Jones, two for four. Santander had a home run, three for four. He's been hitting very well as of late. Kyle Freeland, five earned and five and two thirds, but the bullpen came on strong in three and a third. No runs allowed with four strikeouts from Estevez, Curtis, and Taj Bradley gets another save. So this is against the Mets, who are 34 and 58. I think the second worst team in the MLB this season. We're going to send the rubber match. Taj Bradley on for the save. No outs here. Runner in scoring position. Jet Williams at the dish. And we do hang on there. A clutch win as Taj Bradley got the job done there in a tight spot. Flaherty only one earned in seven innings. He's coming around a little bit after a rough stretch. John Curtis, two earned, but still got a hold. Carlos Estevez, one out recorded. Brendan Rodgers, a home run, and that's what he needed. McMahon, also a home run. He went four for five, now batting 314, and Nolan Jones batting 312, so a little competition there. Pete Alonso, two hits. Santander, two hits as well. So now I think just two more games here before the MLB draft. Chase Dollander on against Logan Allen and the Cleveland Guardians. Another, there's so many trades here in this game. The Cubs acquire Teoscar Hernandez, and they send a few prospects there to the Mets. Robert Lewis, 65 overall, 21 years old, starting pitcher. Reginald Preciado and James Clarkson. And now another key moment here. Colorado were tied. Runners on first and second, one away in the top of the eighth. Brendan Rodgers, another home run in this game. So he's coming around a little bit as we do drop that one, though. We fall 6-5. to five. Tovar, a double, two hits for him. Rodgers, two for three. Back-to-back -back games with a home run. Love to see it. Chase Donder, not a good game. Four earned and five and two-thirds. And Caleb Ferguson, another earned run. He's done. We're done with him. Three hits and an a earned run. And Lucas Sims, an earned run and one and a third. He's also been a very bad uh, addition to the bullpen. Thought we were going to have better guys in those spots this year. We brought in Estevez. Sims, we'll take a look real quick. Estevez, I mean, he's he's been stronger lately. Probably our, our most consistent reliever now. But Caleb Ferguson, I mean, he's still seeing progression. Only 28 years old. Very good last, the last three or four years he's been phenomenal. I mean, over the course of his whole career, really. And now just not doing it in Colorado. 10.55 ERA, a whip over two. So I don't think we'll even trade him. I think we'll just put him on waivers, honestly. And cut our losses with him. We'll burn the 6.2 and let him try and work it out elsewhere. So we'll just go ahead and DFA Caleb Ferguson and we'll just call Lucas Gilbreth back up. Opened on the starting 26, only seven innings of work. Decent numbers, although whip very high at 171 in AAA this year. In 16 innings, a good ERA, even better whip. A war at 0.3. Set, uh, more strikeouts than innings pitched. And decent numbers overall. So we'll bring him back up. And like I said, just cut our losses with Caleb Ferguson. And I think we are just going to go ahead and call up Ken Hughes to AAA. If you missed the past couple episodes, we traded Brenton Doyle to Baltimore Orioles straight up for Ken Hughes. 9 out of 10 so far in saves. 12 and 2 thirds with 15 strikeouts. 3 walks. 4 hits allowed. No home runs allowed. An ERA at .71. A whip even lower at 0.55 and the war at 0.5 so he's already 22 years old 74 overall progressing very nicely and i think he'll be our mlb closer in the next season or two so a quick jump he goes from single a and then right when we acquire him to double a and now just a few weeks later he's going up to triple a so welcome to the albuquerque isotopes ken hughes and since we're doing the mlb draft episode we'll take a look at some of our picks from last year and it all started here with Michael Yamashita, the third overall pick. 18 years old, and he's just tearing it up. 9-4 over 113 innings. 2.39 ERA, a 1.12 whip. 14 quality starts in, what, 19? 14 quality starts in 17 with two complete game shutouts and a war over three. Seeing just good pro uh, progression along the line there. Plus three, plus two. The five-pitch mix with the fastball, change-up, sinker, slider, curveball. And he's not too far away from AAA. And then our second pick last year was Juan Ayala, kind of on a cold streak here, but still decent numbers overall. Six and five, over 100 innings. 
ERA 459 with 139. One complete game, nine quality starts, a war at 2.1 for pitch mix. And this could be our potential 1-2 in the rotation at some point. Then we'll go down here to Herb Lopez, and he was our third pick in that draft, the Southpaw. And he just has dynamite stuff with the 83 velocity, 84 break. Just need to come around in the walks per nine to control a little bit. 2-10, and 10, although I mean the numbers aren't that bad, over 100 innings. I can't believe he's 2-10. and 10. 3.65 ERA, one complete game shutout, seven quality starts. And uh, we look to have a very promising potential rotation. And then we just uh, called up Rudy Smith, and he was our, our fifth round pick last year. And A potential, I think he came in at like a 97, 98 potential, but just a little raw. But you love the size there on the hill, 6'5", 216, primary pitch a slider. And the uh, strikeouts and walks very low, home runs per nine pretty low, the clutch and control pretty low, but um, he's progressing quite nicely, 21 years old, we'll let him start up in double A now. He also picked Alfonso Campanaris last year, a lefty, we just have had him primarily in a long relief role, and the number's not that great, 5.48 ERA, 1.56 whip, but he eats innings out of the bullpen, and what is that, Four, uh, five of the six pitchers we picked last season. Before the MLB draft, we're going to get into the Futures game as we're here from Truist Park as the Atlanta Braves are hosting the 2025 All-Star Game festivities. We're going to get a player lock game here with Adiel Amador. And for those who watched last year's Futures games, last year's draft episode, we saw what was Amador, I think three for four with a home run, three RBIs in that game, something like that. So we'll try and get another home run here with him in this year's Futures game. Amador batting 239 with seven home runs, 33 RBIs there in AAA with the isotopes. We kind of talked about him a little bit earlier. Roberto Escalera, part of the Marlins organization, I believe, if I recall correctly. Got to double check on that. A first round pick in last year's draft. But with Amador, a future shortstop, but we already have Tovar, so maybe our future second baseman. As we are going to get a fielding opportunity here, Dylan Beavers up for the National League. I'm sorry, for the American League. As that is grounded to short, Amador going to field. Quick delivery there to first, and we do get the out. So Amador, a natural shortstop, but we already have Tovar there, who I think is a potential gold glover. So I think Amador is going to have to go to second. I like him at second a little more than third base. If he had a little more pop, maybe I'd consider him for third base. But now our first plate appearance here against Jackson Job, And we're a little early on that curveball, thinking fastball. Uh, not too on top of it, though. And we're going to rip that one. A perfect perfect. And that's off the wall. I thought it was gone. I thought we were going to hit another home run in a Futures game with Amador. But we go to the deepest part of the field, I want to say. That was 103 off the bat. And Amador showcasing his talent here. That had to hit off the high part of the wall. Okay, never. I mean, it, was a, it bounced. I thought it was clean off the wall. A rip regardless. And now we're in scoring position. Just no outs here. Bryce Eldridge, an 0-2 count from Jackson Job. Adiel Amador, pretty good speed. And that's going to be uh, popped out there to left. And that's one away now. Now Brandon Gray up for the National League. I think batting in the nine hole. Now Amador, seven home runs already surpasses last year's total of four. As he really struggled to hit last year in AAA. And they're going to send us home here. Play at the plate perhaps. As Amador dives in to score the game's first run. National League up 1-0. A double from Amador. He comes around to score. And that's how you do it, Gray. And now up 6-0 as we bat around here. We have a runner in scoring position. We drop 6 in the second inning. And we bat around. That's awesome. And Amador, a good rip on that one to deep center. And that drops in for another double over the head of the center fielder. I was thinking about risking it, but we'll just stand pat. You don't want to make the last out at third, even in a 7-0 game. Amador, two doubles in the same inning. That'll bring Bryce Eldridge back up. I can't believe it. 7-0 here in the bottom of the second inning. 
One, two, count here to Eldridge. He's going to rip that to right. And that is going to be caught. Seven come around to score. We go two for two. An RBI double and a run score. National League up 7 nothing. Now a 2-1 count here in the top of the third. Runner on first. A double play opportunity here perhaps. And that is grounded. I've never seen this animation before. And we don't field it cleanly. Can we get one at least? And we don't. So a poor display in the field. I've never seen that um, game you know, menu pop up before. I don't really have many fielding opportunities, but we'll just look forward to our next at-bat now. Chase Hampton on the mound, part of the Yankees organization. Two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Looking at that one all the way. Fastball low and inside. Now the 1-0. That one up and in. Amador some good patience thus far. And I forgot to mention, Amador was actually named the MVP of last year's Futures game. And this time, another rip. And might the center fielder might catch up to that as he does. Oh, no, it drops for a hit. We're going to round second head for third. The run is going to score. Oh, my goodness. A triple now for Amador. Three for three. Two doubles, a triple, two RBIs. National League now up eight to nothing. Bryce Eldridge back up. Probably the only player in the lineup without a hit. We have 12 so far. He's 0 for 2. A full count now. Here's the payoff pitch. And he looks at the ball force. Now runs on the corners. Here's Brandon Gray. Drove us home back in the second to get the scoring started. We've uh, scored seven more times since then. 0-2 count. A swing and a miss as the American League get out of it without further damage. 8-0 from Truist Park. Now we're back up to the plate. 3 for 3. A triple. Two doubles. And two RBIs. Unreal performance from Amador so far. Ah, oh, what are we swinging at? I'm getting a little too overzealous. Good curveball there from Cade Horton. And then we sat on that one. Good late movement. A quick 0-2 hole. And we're looking at the fastball. Froze us there. And we're not going to be perfect as Amador goes down looking. 8-3 after 6. Now, 8-3 to three in the top of the seventh. Runners on the corners. As we do win that time. The diving stop. And why doesn't he throw it? Why didn't we throw it to second? What's going on out here? Ay ay ay. Another E6. Actually, the other one was called a base hit, so only one error committed. Now, 8-4, to four, and that is going to do it. We won't see another plate appearance. As Amador goes three for four, two doubles, a triple, two RBIs, and a run scored, and an E6. The National League Futures take it. And Ken Hughes there gets the save as he was also part of the festivities. You see him and Amador there, uh, right back to back there in line. And I wanted to get Hughes a little action, but we wanted the Amador player lock game instead. And that's going to do it here from Truist Park. Let's see if he was the MVP. And he was, again, Amador, the Futures Game MVP. Let's get him up to the show here soon. So what a performance there from Amador in the Futures Game. And has a player ever won consecutive Futures Game MVPs? Or are they not even allowed you know, to play in multiple Futures Games? But either way, encouraging to see our top prospects showing out on the big stage yet again. As we're now going to sim one more game before the MLB Draft. And hopefully we can instill another young stud prospect into the organization. John Curtis on. Two outs here in the bottom of the eighth. The Rockies up by one. Two runners on. Chase DeLauder up to the plate. And the Guardians steal another one. As we are going to go ahead and enter the 2025 first year player draft. Even though we did preview the draft in our um, st a strategy, I guess you can call it. We'll just do a little quick recap. And Alex Parr, our top option. After further scouting, Costo actually fell down to three on our scouts board. Still very high and likely to be the top player on our board when our pick comes around. But we're really hoping that Alex Parra falls to seven, but very, very unlikely. So Costo looks to be a, a potential goal glover here as an infielder, a good utility man. But the bat really never going to contribute all that much based on these projections. But Elite speed and a, a potential elite base stealer as well. Then there's David Castilla. 
very good contact, great vision and discipline as well. Um, a, a below average fielder, but good speed to kind of counteract that. 21 years old, so fairly pro ready with a very high ceiling as well with the 89 to 99 potential. So I really think I do prefer him over Casto, just a much better hitter. And that potential is just off the charge, likely an A potential player. So even though he is 68th on the board, I wouldn't mind reaching for him at 7 if he's the top player. Peter Harper, really hoping for him in the second round at 44. On um, the contact, each project in the high 80s, it would seem. Low power, though, but vision and discipline, very good. So he's going to get on base a lot. And it looks to be a decent fielder, nothing special, but not a true weakness with a decent speed as well. Billy McKenna, another option here in the second round at 44 with very good contact versus lefties. Above average vision discipline, a strong arm there at the hot corner. But he opted out of the doctor exam, as did Peter Harper. So we'll see how that affects where they end in the draft. In the third round, at, was it 71, I think? Muhammad Huffman going to be our target. A good a corner infielder, very good glove, a strong arm, and a switch hitter. A little raw, though. Jesus Hernandez, 12th on the board, according to our scouts. 100 spots of where he's projected at 112. So we'll probably try and get him with one of our mid-round picks. Maybe uh, work him in at 72 or 81. Really like him as a switch hitter, another utility guy. So a lot of middle infielders in this draft, likely, as last year. Starting pitching was kind of the theme. And it looks like a lot of shortstops and second baseman this year. Very good contact. Vision and discipline up there. Vision, very, very good. Above average fielder with good speed as well. And then Tom Park, fourth on our board. 170 spots ahead of where the MLB has him. Decent contact versus right. He's really not going to be all that great of a hitter. But a potential gold glover there at second base with very good speed. A lefty, 6'4", 215. The potential at 84 to 99. So someone we probably reach for maybe at 81 or 111. Keith Benitez, not even ranked on the MLB board. Another middle infielder. A little bit better bat than most of the other guys, even though still not great. But uh, a little bit above average with a decent glove, very good speed. So a lot of similar play styles here among all these middle infielders. So really hoping that Parra slips to seven. Although, like I said, very, very unlikely. Alexis Pedroza, only 35% scouted. So we'll see if he slips a little bit. Ken Ramirez, definitely want to target him at maybe 111. I don't think he'll get past that point. Tremendous contact versus righties. Good against lefties as well. Very good vision discipline with a very strong arm back there at the backstop. Really, these other options just darts later on in the draft. Castro, a center fielder. A couple short stops, a center fielder. Then another catcher, 35% scouted. And, I mean, a switch hitting catcher that late in the draft. Might as well throw a dart. So, really, um, I don't know how this draft is going to go. It's always a crapshoot here in the show draft. So, we'll see how it is and we'll start it up. And with that, I believe the Chicago White Sox are on the clock as they are. They won the draft lottery. And we'll go ahead and start it up officially. And we'll see how they go. It's Steve Dell, the number one prospect on the board. And he does go number one. We didn't scout him at all. So I'm very happy to see him go in this spot. Now the number two pick. Please don't be Alex Parra. And they go Pedro Rosado. A, a whiff here from the Detroit Tigers. We had uh, MLB has him at six. We scouted him fully. Went down to 69. The potential only 71 to 83. But... I mean, the traits weren't bad, so he could probably still be a good player, but definitely not up to the number two pick. And now picking number three. Marcos Casto. That was our backup plan. So Alex, he goes to the athletics. Alex Parr is still on the board, but we have three more until our pick. The Mets, Pirates, and Nationals. Who, who are the Mets going to go with? Maybe one of the pitchers, hopefully. And they go with Leonardo Pinero, and he dropped from 7 to 50, according to our scouts. Now the Pittsburgh Pirates, Alex Parr is still on the board. And they go with Mario Polanco, number 3, and he went down to number 54. Very good player, but fell from uh, this top status. Now Alex Parra remains on the board, and we're going to get our guy. The Nationals go with Fletcher Kingman, the top pitcher. 
And that leaves Alex Parra here. The arm strength off the charts there at third base. 19 years old. I did not think we were going to end up with him. Elite hitter potential, especially against lefties. Division and discipline above average. Going to hit well against righties as well. 81 to 93 potential, 63 to 75 overall. So a very high floor, high potential as well. And if David Castilla can uh, slide, what's our next pick? 44. If he can slide to 44, that would just be a dream scenario. But I don't know if that's going to be the case. So last year we missed out on our guy, Howard Wooten. And we had to go with Michael Yamashita, although he's been pitching very well this year. We do get our number one option in Alex Parra. Welcome to Colorado, number 87. I love it. Now the LA Angels on the clock. And we're not going to you know, go through every single pick. For the first round, we will just monitor it, see where some of these guys go. They go with Marcelo Lerma, the 46th ranked pitcher. We never even scouted him. So now two pitchers in the top eight. Boston now up. And they got William McCauley. He was the other pitcher there with Kingman, who were considered to be the top two guys. McCauley looks to be a very good pitcher overall. I mean, if he's he was ranked, I believe, higher than Kingman. Kingman a lefty, though, out of Germany. Both seem to be very good. Fletcher Kingman to the Nationals. McCauley to the Red Sox. The Giants, our division rival, go with Rafael Benitez, the draft's top catcher, but slipped a little bit after scouting, but still looks to be a very good player. I just don't know how much he's going to grow throughout his career. Abraham Zapata to the Marlins, 31st on the board. The Royals go with Pierre Sinet. I'm sorry, Pierre Sinet. Not a good hitter at all. Looks to be a very good fielder, though, in center. But he dropped from 12 to 109 after scouting. And look at this. The Padres go with Alexis Pedroza, 126 on the MLB board. The draft logic in this game just needs a lot of fixing. And the trades do as well. Last episode, we had a trade. Or was this this episode, we had a trade. And it wasn't necessarily the trade that was bad, but there's just so many trades in this game. And a lot of them just super unrealistic. Like um, the Tigers already traded Spencer Torkelson and Riley Green. The Rangers traded Wyatt Langford. Like, what is going on? And we are moving through here. A couple more starting pitchers, Brewers and Astros. Look, they, they pick uh, players reasonably for these slots. Now the Rangers up. And like I said, if Castilla goes all the way down to pick 44, that is just a dream scenario. And I'm so glad Para fell because... uh. I'm sorry, Alex Parra, I'm so glad he fell because, I mean, all our options are pretty much second baseman and shortstop, so we got to save that for later on. And now four straight starting pitchers, make it five. Pete Porter to the Orioles, going heavy pitchers now. Now the Diamondbacks, as they go with Junior Rosales, keeping the trend going, make it a half dozen. Is Tampa Bay going to go with a pitcher? I hope that everyone just goes with a pitcher until we pick another one off the board because we did not invest any resources into scouting pitching as we outlined our pitching was the main focus last year. Another pitcher there, my goodness. What is that, eight in a row now? All of them seem to be pr pretty reasonably drafted as well. You'd like to see that. Another one, Mark Garland to the Twins. He's a little bit lower there, 69 on the MLB board. Now the Atlanta Braves on the clock. As they go with the catcher, Joaquin Castillo, another catcher we scouted, went down a little bit. Looks to have a very strong arm, above average contact, and a decent fielder as well, but dropped from 18 to 47. The Phillies go with a shortstop, Lonnie Barger. Looks to be a very good player. Maybe we should have scouted him, a switch hitter. Good glove, good speed, good contact, vision, discipline. Jay Darth, another starter off the board, so... We're 17 away, and if we can get away with Castilla, I was going to say, if we can get away with Castilla or Peter Harf, Harper, who goes off the board here to division rival the Dodgers, and he's going, to, he's going to stay in California. He looks to be a very good player, elite contact with very good vision discipline, so probably a 300 hitter when he works into the league. Yankees go second baseman, and the Cubs, the World Series winning, Chicago Cubs go with Logan Francisco, Looks to be a decent left fielder. Now here in the prospect promotion incentive round, as the Rangers take the top close, closing pitcher, I mean, 
not even ranked on the MLB board. They take him at, what, 31? And he does stay in Texas, though. Maybe they see something we don't. Raleigh Donovan now to the Rays. And at this point, you just see a flurry of relievers, um, I guess more so closers. Raleigh, Raleigh Donovan looks to be the top closer in the draft. Fourth on the overall board. Brewers go second baseman, Newt McKinley. And a reliever here to the White Sox. And now 10 more picks. And I don't think our guy is going to be there. I just always prepare for him not to be. But certainly hope he is another closer off the board to the Twins. They go starter in the first. And now closer here in the competitive balance round A. Luis Zarate looks to be a pretty good shortstop. Goes to the Marlins. Now Cincinnati on the clock. Cincinnati sniped us last year for Howard Wooten who ended up being the top overall player from that draft. Richard Chin, a closer, not ranked on the MLB board, but the Reds take him here. Another relief pitcher here to Detroit, Richie Perez. So what, five more picks? And we have a legit chance right now. The A's go with Greg Patterson, a starting pitcher. And now just four more picks. Let's go. I have a good feeling here. Detroit on the clock, the worst team last year. As they go with Ashton G, a left fielder. Potential 99 power versus righties. And a very strong arm as well. White Sox go with a reliever here. Now just two picks away. Truman Zikafus. What a name that is. The Nationals go with Michael Phillips, a reliever. And the Mets on the clock. Just go with the pitcher. You know you want to. I can already see David Castilla as a Colorado Rocky, and it's going to happen. They go with Antonio Guzman, one of the top first basemen who we didn't really get around to scouting. So uh, David Castilla, you know, we thought we were going to end up with him at 7, and we're now going to end up with him at 44 as we get a third baseman and a second baseman. Castilla, potentially, you know, a very good contact hitter with good vision discipline, not the best fielder, but above average speed. And I'm um, adequate in the field. So a third baseman and a second baseman as we look to get a huge boost to our lineup in the coming years. And Castilla, maybe even a higher ceiling than Para at 89 to 90 potential. So now our next pick at 72. And I think we, at this point, we will just go ahead and start simming to our next pick. We will review, though to see if any of our players go off here. No one here on this. Or oh, Jesus Hernandez to the Astros. See, they reached for him at 54 when he was 112 on the MLB board. So teams are going to start reaching for these uh, diamonds in the rough, if you will. And Hernandez had elite contact against lefties, elite vision, very good speed. Love the switch hitting, but we're not going to steal him in this one, unfortunately. Billy McKenna to the Diamondbacks. Very good against righties, but... We had a better option there in Castilla at 44. No one else here. Now in competitive round B. So only McKenna was a player we saw fall. And now we have Tom Park here. So now it's like, do we go Muhammad Huffman? Who this is his vicinity. And can we get Tom Park at 81? Park fourth on our scouts board. I don't really know if we want to risk that. Already a second baseman in this draft, so I think Huffman might be the pick. A little raw, only 18 years old, but you like the switch hitting. You love the fielding there as a first base, third baseman with a very strong arm. And we don't have any other first baseman on our board, so Tom Park, it would be a shame if he went off the board here between 81, but he's so far down at 174. I think we'll be all right, you know, less than 10 picks from now. So we have a third baseman, a second baseman, and now we'll get a first baseman here in Muhammad Huffman. Welcome to the organization. And now we will just watch these next few picks play out since we only have a few. The Kansas City Royals closing out competitive balance round B as they go with Johan Mejia, a reliever out of Dominican Republic. Now the compensatory round Robert Coe to Cleveland and the Yankees go with Orin Steele a catcher as we are six picks now away Detroit leading us off here in the third as they go with Tim Knoll now the White Sox back up 
And Tom Park would be awesome here. I mean, he's not really going to offer much with a bat, but I think I said earlier, potential gold glover at second. A very good speed, very good uh, base stealer. And he'll come around against righties eventually, it seems. White Sox go with a reliever, Kevin Bledsoe. The Nationals go with a starter, Rob Ellis. Now the Mets on the clock. And they go with Rich Rubio, a right fielder. Potential there between 75 and 99, but definitely a raw prospect. And now Oakland, one away, as they go with Frank Prince, a reliever. So it's going to go kind of um, best case scenario. I would have preferred Jose, or I'm sorry, um, Jesus Hernandez, that shortstop who went to the Astros, but super content here to end up with Tom Park. I kind of want to, I'm like thinking, should we go with Ken Ramirez and try to hold off to 111 for Tom Park, but not going to risk it. Number four on our board, and we'll just go with our scouts recommendation. So two second basemen, a first baseman, and a third baseman. Like I said last draft, then we will go ahead and sim to the Rockies pick. And Benitez and Ramirez are really just the two guys we're looking at now. I think I just saw Keith Benitez went one pick ahead of where we were. And I don't think Ken Ramirez made it all the way down. It looks like Ken Ramirez did make it. So, oh no, he did not. I missed it. Where did he get picked? I don't even see him anywhere. How is he not on our board? Or did I just miss him? Oh no, he is here. Okay. Pardon me there. So we do end up with a catcher as well. I did not think we were going to end up with a variety here. I thought it was going to be like a three second baseman, three short stops. But Ken Ramirez looks to have very good contact versus righties. Very good, I mean, good against lefties as well with a very strong arm and maybe a potential like backup catcher for us. So we add more variety, more, um, you know, different position to the organization. And now just a bunch of darts here to end it. Luis Castro would be nice to add an outfielder. Very good speed there in center. David Jackson and Thomas Gonzalez, a couple short stops. We'll go ahead and sim to our pick. Thomas Gonzalez off the board, one ahead of us. But Castro is on the board along with Robert Marmalejo. And I think I always preferred Marmalejo, to be honest. I mean, the potential at 89 to 97. The overall is going to be very low, though, so a very raw player. But looks to have decent contact in the future. Very speedy with a good glove. And he can even play second base. So I think we just go with the ceiling here. Castro, 100% scattered lefty. Definitely a higher floor. But I think Marmalejo, honestly, is the better player, so we'll go with him as well. Welcome, Robert Marmalejo, and I really like how this draft has panned out. So just Luis Castro and Greg Dobbs remaining on our board. And they're both here, so, I mean, this seems easy. Our scouts have Castro at 104, and he's on the board here at 171, so we'll pull the trigger. So two center fielders to end the draft. We end up with a shortstop, a catcher, a sec two second basemen, a first baseman, and a third baseman. But most importantly, we end up with Alex Para, the top option for us in this draft. What a remarkable draft, and it just fell into place for us. I think David Castilla is going to be a potential 300 hitter. And then we add Muhammad Huffman, more of a platoon guy, but you love the switch hitting versatility and a very strong glove off the bench with a strong arm. And you add Tom Park, probably another platoon guy, but a very high ceiling. And our scouts were really in on him. So a very promising start. And then we got Ken Ramirez. We added a catcher to the organization with tremendous contact, a strong arm. And then Robert Marmalejo and Luis Castro to end it. So I feel very good about that draft. And we will just simulate this last game here. Cal Quantrill on the mound against his former team, right? In the Cleveland Guardians. Tristan McKenzie, 10 and 5. And we will just go ahead and do a, a quick manage here to end it. Quantrill, very good over his last five or six starts, although his last one, not that great. Nolan Jones also against his former team, right? And a bunch of guys tired here, but we'll just roll with it. I mean, we do want to get Montero. Montero hasn't played in forever. We're going to take Brian out because Brian's just been hitting very well. I guess he's getting colder now, average now below 300. So I think now we'll start to get Montero some looks at DH. We'll put him here between Tovar and Jansen. 
So Joe Adele in the leadoff spot with uh, the Brendan Rodgers cold streak as he grounds out to start. A two-out double from Jones. And then Pete Alonzo, an RBI single. McKenzie, his ERA barely over two entering this game. Now Brendan Rodgers up as he strikes out. Steven Kwan to lead it off. There's an error there on Jimenez. And then a two-run home run from Josh Naylor. And then another home run in the inning. Brian De La Cruz. And then a ground out. De La Cruz just acquired recently. And another one of the million trades that have gone on. A 1-2-3 inning there. And then a 1-2-3 inning from Quantrill. A two-out double from McMahon. And then Nolan Jones strikes out. Now the bottom of the third, a 1-2-3 inning from Quantrill. Pete Alonzo, a solo home run. Now two for two with an RBI. A single from Brendan Rodgers. A single from Santander. So runners on the corners, no, no outs. A line out. And now Montero up. As he gets an RBI double, and the second runner was thrown out at the plate. We're all now tied up. Danny Jansen works a walk. Now Joe Adele as he grounds out. Now 3-3 three to three in the bottom of the fourth. A leadoff double from Jose Ramirez. Strikeout, flyout, walk. So two outs. Tyler Freeman up as he grounds out. Now Ryan McMahon to lead it off with a single. Nolan Jones strikes out. Now Pete Alonzo. 3-3 three for three. now. Another single. And Brendan Rodgers, an RBI single. The Rockies take the lead. Now here's Santander as he draws a walk. Base is loaded for Tovar as they bring in Tommy Mace. Tovar, a fielder's choice. Now Montero back up as he strikes out with the bases juiced. Quantrill now on for his fifth inning. Only three hits allowed. Two home runs, though, as he gets a 1-2-3 inning. Jansen leads off with a ground out. Now Adele a double. An Adele double. Now McMahon works a walk. Nolan Jones a ground out. Runs on second and third for Pete Alonzo. Three for three as he get, probably gets an intentional walk there. Now Brendan Rodgers up as he flies out. Again, the Rockies strand the bases loaded in back-to-back -back innings. Kyle Quantrill now back out there. Very strong after a rough first inning. A one-out single to Ramirez. Now De La Cruz up as Ramirez steals the second base. A pop-up. And now Bo Naylor will pitch around him as he does draw a walk. Now Gabriel... Arius up as he grounds out. Six strong innings from Quantrill. Or I guess we'll call it five strong innings. And now Trevor Steffen on a pitch. An ERA at 7-3-8. Not a good season from him so far. Leadoff single from Santander. Tovar a single. Now Montero up as he grounds into a double play. Now Danny Jansen with Santander in third. And he strikes out. 13 hits for the Rockies. Only four for Cleveland. And it's a one-run game. Tyler Freeman Leads off with two flyouts. Steven Kwan, a single. Andres Jimenez, an RBI double. And now the go ahead run on second. Josh Naylor up. And we'll go with Lucas Gilbreth here. His first appearance since being called back up as he gets the pop up. Now Joe Adele on to lead it off. As Cleveland does go back to the bullpen. A two out single for McMahon. A walk from Nolan Jones. Pete Alonso back up. As he singles, now four for four. With a home run and three singles. 15 hits for the Rockies. A tie game here. Bases loaded again. Brendan Rodgers up as he strikes out. Now Santander flies out for the third time. The Rockies strain the bases loaded. A leadoff single from Ramirez. De La Cruz strikes out. Now Bo Naylor as he gets a double. And Ramirez was thrown out trying to score. I think we'll go back to the bullpen now. I think we'll give Justin Lawrence a run here. He hasn't seen... Any action as he gets a strikeout. Now top of the ninth in a tie ball game. Scott Barlow now on for the Guardians. And he gets a 1-2-3 inning. Now Tyler Freeman up. Strikes out. Chase DeLauder strike, uh, grounds out. And a 1-2-3 inning there from Justin Lawrence. Job well done. Do we go with the pinch hitter here? Do we go with Chris Bryant? I think we'll leave Adele out there. Has a double. Danny Jansen on second. Adele grounds out. Now Ryan McMahon, he flies out. Nolan Jones, and he strikes out. So worst case scenario there. I don't know if we leave Lawrence in. He does get a strikeout, and then we lose. I can't believe he lost that game. 15 hits, we fall 5-4. to four. And again, we're going to draw. We're going to come to a conclusion of an episode on a three-game losing streak, but... This is where I'm going to leave you, folks. Thank you so much for watching. A tremendous showing from Adiel Amador in the Futures game. And then a home run 
a home run draft, I think. I think we nailed a bunch of spots. We got great value. We got an elite caliber prospect, it seems, in Alex Para, and I really was not ready for that. So, as always, everybody, it's been real and be well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.